Cadaver dogs have spent two days now searching for Susan's remains near Salem, Oregon. Just walking through the brush here, you can see why this would be such a plausible lead. A major development in 2013 brought the search for Susan Powell back into public focus in a big way. West Valley police, along with local agencies, scoured nearly 200 acres of dense, wooded terrain in Scotts Mills, Oregon, looking for any trace of Susan. They didn't find anything. After three days, police called it quits. But cold host Dave Colley now knows there was more to investigators' actions we could not see at the time. Breaking news in the search for Susan Powell. This was big news at the time, ago. but as we've learned, West Valley police were good at diverting attention during their investigation. We have been diligent and meticulously investigating this entire case. What we've uncovered as part of our own investigation is that police were doing more in Oregon that week than just searching the woods. They were zeroing in on their final person of interest, a person of interest you never knew about. His name, Maurice Leach. While canines were combing through brush and trees, officers from West Valley and the FBI were hooking up Josh Powell's uncle to a polygraph. Leach had lived at the Scotts Mills property at the time Susan disappeared. Detectives wanted to know, had Josh disposed of her body there? Obviously Susan's still missing, so there are pieces that we don't have. Maurice and his wife Patty, Steve Powell's sister, were strong supporters of Josh from the beginning. Maurice had spent hours on the phone with both Josh and his brother Michael. He'd also talked to Josh about how to surf the web anonymously. Maurice told investigators Josh had only once been to the property, and that was before Susan disappeared. He had offered to let Josh come to avoid public scrutiny after she went missing, but he never came. Maurice did admit it was possible Josh could have accessed the property undetected. But with no leads from the dogs on site, agents ended their interview with the belief that Maurice had no knowledge of what had happened to Susan Powell and no role in her disappearance. We are drawing closer to a point where we may have uh, looked at every aspect that we have before us. Days later, police officially declared the case cold. We are announcing the end of the active phase of the search for Susan. No trace of Susan has ever been found. No arrests were ever made and no charges were ever brought against anyone related to her death, a fact Susan's family and the public found infuriating. If Josh had ever been actually arrested in sitting in jail, uh, with the circumstantial evidence they had on him, he would have said, okay, I dumped her here, I did this, whatever he did, I think we would have known. But uh, they didn't do it. Salt Lake County's top prosecutor says the case wasn't that simple. This is not television. This isn't CSI. This is real life. And sometimes you get your answers. Sometimes you have to work really hard to put those answers together. One of the biggest obstacles to a slam dunk case against Josh, Susan still being missing. When you don't have that physical body, when that forensic piece is missing, there is a whole host of logical possibilities and if I have more than one logical possibility in any realistic sense, I have reasonable doubt. The unique twists and turns of the case also did more than just peak public attention. They provided new avenues for investigators to tighten their case around Josh. Everybody was doing everything possible on those moving dynamics within that family. The legal challenges that were going on were giving uh, law enforcement some additional opportunities to shake certain pieces of evidence loose. And the pieces were finally coming together. Detectives and prosecutors believed they were mere months away from taking action, but they ran out of time. I said, I want a formal screening. I want us to bring it all together. I want everybody in the room that we can because that was something that had not happened. And West Valley was doing a fantastic job of trying to shake down every tree that they could. Those investigators were working. They were, I don't think that I, I could in any honest way say that any one of those investigators ever let up on the commitment and the energy and the time and the resources they were putting into it. And the tragedy is that we were moving towards that formal process when those deaths occurred. With the deaths of Josh, his brother Michael, and their father Steve, and crossing the last name off of their list of possible persons of interest, police were forced to move on, once again without a resolution. I mean, I don't know how many times an individual can uh, come across a potential breaking lead in a case and be shut down. It's like, nope, this ain't it. Need to go find something else. And uh, so I, I think we were all hopeful. I was hopeful. 
But uh, again, at the end of the day, just tons of resources and uh, no results. But, you know, we were able to say that she wasn't there. We reached out repeatedly to Maurice to see if he still believes his nephew was never involved in Susan's disappearance. He never returned our calls. That silence is just one more lingering frustration for Susan's family in their ongoing search for answers. A family that still backs him up after all that. Still, I mean, still cannot admit what their son has done. He's gone. What are you saving? What are you doing? You know, you're, well, they're protecting themselves. And they're, they're lying to themselves. Dave Colley is back with us tonight. And Dave, the newest episode of the podcast is available now. And you have some exciting news also. Yeah, we do. The cold team is announcing tonight a live event that will be coming up. Uh, people will have a chance to ask questions. We're going to be sharing some unseen footage. And uh, some special guests will be joining us as well. And a portion of the proceeds will be going to the Utah Domestic Violence Coalition. Be a very interesting night. Dave, thank you. Cold Live happening Thursday, May 16th at the Eccles Theater. Tickets go on sale March 15th, but you can win tickets before they go on sale. Just go to the cold Facebook page and fill out the entry form. You can enter once each day until March 13th. We'll notify winners on the cold Facebook page.